Assalamu alaikum and hello again. Now we will talk about the output devices. You can find it in your book, chapter 2, in page 35, it is topic 2.3. Now, what is the output device? I can describe it by talking about hardware devices that allow data to be output from the computer. So, any device that can show me the output or the data from the computer, it is an output device. These devices can hold the data in temporarily way, permanent, or just in control way. Now, if I talk about the printer, the printer, the buffer memory, can hold the data in temporarily, just until it is printed out on the hard copy on the paper. Once it is printed out as a hard copy on a paper, it is permanent output. And for the control devices and control applications, now we will talk about it when we arrive to the topic five in these output devices. Now, what are the examples of the output devices? We have monitors, multimedia projector, which is in our classroom uh, as a data show, printers, speakers, and the control applications. Now, monitors. We have this old style of monitors, which is named CRT, cathode ray tube monitors, the least expensive type of monitor. And it is now rarely used because of using TFT monitor. As you see, TFT monitor, the thin monitors in our labs, which is built in or integrated with your laptop, these TFT monitors, are used now over the CRT. Now the picture is made of tiny dots on these screens as the pixels, and these are colored in three basic colors, red, green, blue. So the intensity of each colored dot makes up vast range of colors interpreted by the eye. So this is about CRT. Now, what are the uses? You can find two uses. Uh, we can back by this use to the input devices about the light pins. So, when we talk about the uses of the light pin, we are talking about CRT monitor. And when we talk about the CRT monitor, we are talking about a light pin. Also, you can talk about it as it is the output, as a primary output device. It is one of the most important output devices. You cannot imagine to use some computer or laptop or tablet even without a screen or monitor. Now the advantages of using the CRT in a specific as a monitor, the angle of your view is still better than using a TFT monitors because of no light reflection. Also, they work with light pins as the use and the advantage, the light pin is mentioned here. Also, we can talk about some disadvantages. They tend to be rather heavy. So it is a huge, massive, heavy, and for safety issues, if something uh, happened for this screen or monitor when you are transferring it, some big problem will happen as when it is failing down, it may hurt somebody. They run very hot and can cause fire if left unattended because it is old technology. Because they got hot very quick, they consume more power, more than the modern TFT, and they can flicker, so it can hurt your eyes and make some headaches and eyesight, eyesight problems. Now, by this, we can go to the TFT, the modern monitors, which is, stands for thin film transistor monitor. Any thin monitor, it is classified as TFT, but we will see that these TFT are classified into two types. Now, let's find out TFT. The uses of TFT also, it is a primary output device for the computer, 
and it is integral part of the laptop computers. Now the advantages, lightweight and do not pose the same risks as CRT monitor. They produce less glare than the CRT and also emit less radiation. The third advantage, they consume much less power and do not generate as much heat as a CRT monitor. So all of these advantages of CRT, we can find it as advantages of TFT, but the disadvantages, we have two. The angle of viewing of the TFT is fairly critical. It's not like the CRT. You don't care there about the view angle. And the definition is sometimes not good as good as the CRT monitor. So the resolution in the TFT is not as the CRT. Okay, now we will talk about LCD and LED monitors, which are these both classified under the TFT. Now, what does LCD monitor stands for? It is liquid crystal display diodes. You can find it as display or diode technology. Now, in the front layer of the monitor, it is made up of liquid crystal diodes. And these diodes group together in three or fours. Now, these are the pixels in the LCD, the tiny grouped, as we said, threes or fours, it is the pixels. Now, the three colors are grouped into the red, green, blue diodes, as we saw in CRT, and sometimes they include in the fourth, if we have fourth groups, so we have the yellow, yellow diodes, which is said to make the colors more vivid, so it will be more clear if this LCD using group of fours in the colors. Now, the LCD as modern LCD monitor are backlit using lit emitting diodes, which is transferring us or taking us to talk about LED monitor or LED technology. So the modern LCD is classified as LED. This gives the image better contrast and brightness. Before the use of LEDs, LCDs, monitors used what? Cathode, called cathode fluorescent lamp, CCFL, as backlighting method. So now we will talk about this CCFL and the LEDs. Now essentially, CCFL uses two fluorescent tubes behind the LCD screen, which supplies the light source. Now, let's find out. LEDs have become increasingly more popular due to the number of advantages over older CCFL technology. I will ask you about the advantages of LEDs over CCFL technology. So you can find out these advantages. Let's reach their maximum brightness almost immediately. LEDs give whiter light, which sharpens the image and makes the colors appear more vivid. Let's produce brighter light, which improves the color definition. Monitors use LED technology as much thinner than monitors using CCFL technology, which is leading to the lightweight and the portability. LEDs last almost indefinitely, and also LEDs consume very little power, which means they produce less heat as well. They are using less energy and less bills. Okay, now after this, what of the future for the monitors? Future LED technology will make use of organic light emitting diodes, which is now used. When you talk about curved monitors, you are talking about the OLEDs, 
the organic lids and these organic materials are used to create semiconductors that are very flexible now it also means that there is no longer a need to use the lcd technology since the oled is a self-contained system now oleds allow screens to be curved which ensures a good picture from any angle so we are now coming over some of the disadvantages of the LCDs or the TFTs in general. Now, it is also possible using OLEDs technology to bend screens to any shape. If this is adopted by mobile phone manufacturers, it will be possible to develop phones that can wrap around your wrist. Imagine screens so thin that they can be folded up and placed in your pocket until they are needed. Using folding OLED displays attached to fabrics creating smart clothing, this could be used on outdoor survival clothing where an integrated circuit, mobile phone, GPS receiver and OLEDs could also be sewn into the clothing. This is if the mobile manufacturers have adopted the OLED technology in their manufacturing for their mobiles. So it will be an easy life. You will not forget or damage the screen of your mobile since it is flexible and it can be folded. Now, the advantages of using OLED compared to LED and LCD monitor screen. As you see, this is a concept for the flexible screens. You can just hold it using some holder like this as a stand and you can just make it flexible as you want after you finish working with it you can just fold it in your pocket and go your way now what are the advantages the plastic or organic layers of an OLED are thinner lighter and more flexible than the LEDs or LCDs light emitting layers of LEDs are also lighter OLEDs give brighter light than the LEDs. OLEDs do not require backlighting like the LCD monitors. Also, since OLEDs require no backlighting, they use much less power than LCDs. And also of the LEDs, since OLEDs are essentially plastics, they can be made into large, thin sheets. It will be more flexible and this manufacturing will be very easy to be done and cheap. Now, maybe it is expensive because it is a new methodology and a new technology, but it will be cheap after a while. OLEDs have very large field of view. They have 170 degrees as the angle of view which make it um, ideal for use in television sets and for advertising screens. LCDs and LEDs screens are used on many handheld devices such as mobile phones, tablets, game consoles and in some fridges in the market Modern LCD screens are very thin and very lightweight and are very responsive to touch. By this, we have finished talking about monitors and we can talk about multimedia projectors. Now, if I have some number of audience, a group of audiences, and I want to tell them or to explain for them some demo or some workshop, I cannot just hold my monitor 
as much my monitor is huge or I cannot just hold my mobile or tablet just to show them my idea or my presentation. So I need some other device which making me able to demonstrate and to make my presentation for this large group of audiences and also to make my work in larger size. Now, multimedia projectors is my solution. It receives the signals that can be either analog or digital from my computer or my television or DVD player, whatever is your processor or the device that you want to show from, it can be attached to it and it can send the signal through the that the show or the multimedia projector. The image from the source is magnified and projected onto a large screen. The devices usually work with a remote control, but also use virtual mouse technology. Now, another future, sorry, another feature of virtual mouse is the laser pointer, which is most multimedia projectors take input from various types of video format. So as you see in the classroom, teachers are using the pointers and the remote control for controlling the data show in the multimedia projector. But you can see in some conferences, in the TV or in some YouTube uh, presenters, they are working in their laser pointers. They are working with them to control the sliding and the data show as a multimedia projector. Now, the uses of multimedia projector, as I said, the training presentations, advertising presentations also, and home cinema systems. Some people don't like to go for cinema theaters, so they want to create their own cinema at home. So you can use it as multimedia projector. And now, advantages and disadvantages of the multimedia projector. Advantages are enables many people to see the presentation rather than crowding around a small computer screen, avoids the need for several networked computers and the disadvantages images can sometimes be fuzzy so you have just to adjust the screen and to be careful about the resolution and the quality of your work expensive to buy from the outset and setting up projectors can be a little difficult because